Well, hi, thanks for watching the video. And today we're gonna to be talking about something for you. You're gonna get your first synth. So what is the best synthesizer to start with? So before we actually go and recommend anything, I just want you to have a little look at some of these considerations first. Firstly, what are you going to use the synthesizer for? Are you going to basically just learn from it? Is it a beginner tool? Are you going to play it in live jams or even performing with it? Do you want an analog or a digital synthesizer? it might be important to actually know what the difference is. And in this video, I'm actually going to recommend a number of both analog and digital synthesizers. Do you need a monophonic or polyphonic synthesizer? What does that mean? Well, it means, do you want to play one note at a time or do you want to play many notes at a time? And how many voices does each note need to have? Do you want to just have one voice or oscillators or do you want to have multiple? to thicken up the sound and give it some variation. What type of oscillators do you want? Do you want digitally controlled oscillators, voltage controlled oscillators or VCO? There's all sorts of different types of oscillators to choose from. Waves, sawtooth, triangles, square waves, sine waves, noise, there's plenty. What type of filter do you want? Do you want to have a ladder type filter? Do you want 24 dB, 12 dB? What does all this mean? Do you want the filter to be digital or analog too? There's another choice. So the filter is what controls the, the frequency output of the sound. And we'll get into that in a sec with the choices. Other features in the synthesizer do you need? You need to have control over the amp, which is the amplifier side, which outputs the sound. Do you need to have envelopes which shape the sound? Do you need modulation control like an LFO or a low frequency oscillator and modulation sources? Do you need to have lots and lots of this stuff? Or are you just after something a bit more simple? Probably an important one is, do you want patch storage? And that is, patches are what sounds you create. You wanna save them so that you can recall them and use them later. Some synthesizers don't have patch storage and you need to be aware. And I think one of the biggest questions is price. What is your budget? And really, what is a good price to spend on a synthesizer and what is a bad price to spend? And this is all very subjective. So let's assume in this video that we're gonna keep everything to below or around the 500 US dollar mark because it's the first synth. Do you wanna get a new synthesizer or a used one, a secondhand one? Do you wanna have a warranty with it? Do you wanna have problems having to fix issues that aren't under warranty? Do you wanna consider those sort of things? The other thing is maybe you wanna have a look at the size of the synthesizer. Do you want something to fit on your desk? Do you want it to be on a stand? and we call that the form factor. So all of these things need to be considered. And I think the last thing is the, the interface, the user interface. You know, some synthesizers have very busy interfaces with lots of knobs and others are basic menu driven interfaces where you're going through a screen and choosing menu options. And some have both. So you might wanna have a look at both of those. There's a lot to consider here, but I want you to have a look at that list and answer these questions for yourself because I think that'll help you get to that decision quicker. Okay, so on to the synths. So I'm gonna recommend two synthesizers in three sections. So that's a total of six synthesizers all together. I know it's a lot, but remember, you guys are all gonna have different needs here. So I feel that we need to split it up into three different sections. Also, I'm gonna try and keep the budget on or below 500 US dollars. It might go slightly over in some cases because this is your first synth and I believe that that's a good price range to sort of look at. You definitely can spend a lot more than that and you definitely can spend a lot less. All right, the first category is analog. So what is analog? Well, analog is a type of circuit that the electronics in the synthesizer are used and basically, the benefits of analog are that you get a more natural or discrete sound. And analog were the first synthesizers that ever were made. So a lot of that retro or vintage sound can be made with an analog synthesizer. The disadvantage of analog could be that you don't get as many voices um, because the componentry can be expensive to produce multiple voices and there may be less features because it's using the older style electronic circuits. So you can't implement necessarily 
around the voice structure. You can't implement digital technology, but you can implement digital technology around the interface, just not in the voice path. So in an analog synth, we want it to be analog from all the way from the start to the finish as much as we can. So let's have a look at the two different sections of analog. And um, we'll first start off with monophonic, which is when you play, you only get one sound per note. So you can't play chords. And I'm gonna recommend two synths in the monophonic category of analog. So let's check those out. The first synth I'm gonna recommend in the analog monophonic category is the Arturia Microbrew. This thing's been out for many years now and it's an absolute goater. So let's go over to the workbench and let's check this out right now. Microbrood, here it is guys. What is so good about the Microbrood? Well, it's monophonic, it's analog, it's really, really compact. This synthesizer doesn't have any patch memory. If you wanna learn analog synthesis, this is a really good synthesizer to learn on. The reason why it's good is because you've got all the controls here, knob per function, there's no menu diving, there's no computer behind it, it's literally just all analog. So let's talk about the features of this. It's This oscillator has this really unique mixer section here where you can combine waveforms together. It's still a single oscillator, but you can actually combine a sawtooth wave, a square wave, and a triangle wave together. And not only that, you've also got these extra adjustments for each of these waveforms that are on that one oscillator. And on top of that, you also have a sub oscillator, which can turn into a fifth. So let's shut up and let's just have a listen purely to the oscillator. That's just a standard sort. Now let's have a listen to the ultra saw part of it, okay? Now we can introduce the sub oscillator to this. That's just the sawtooth with the sub oscillator. Now this also has the, the fifth One oscillator, guys, making all that racket. Okay. You guys can, if you buy this thing, you can go and play this. I'm not going to show you everything on this synth. That's the coolness of the oscillator on this synth. Not only that, it also has a, so the voltage control oscillator, if I didn't mention that. Now to the filter, it's a VCF or voltage controlled filter. It's a Steiner Parker filter, so let's have a listen. Alright, let's go. Alright, now let's add some resonance. a 12 dB filter, but you've got th uh, three modes, low pass, band pass, and high pass. So let's have a listen to quickly. And high pass. Not only that, but the reason why it gets its name Micro Brute is because of this knob here, it gets the brute factor. And listen to this. So this is basically an overdrive. So it's the filter feeding back into itself. What else I love about this is it's got a little mod matrix over here. And we can talk about that later, but let's just talk about the basic controls. So oscillator, filter, envelope, 
LFO. So as you can see, this synthesizer is really hands-on. It also has a really cool sequencer. So that's pretty handy, you can make your own sequences and you can record them as well. One other thing too, I did mention that it doesn't have patch memory, but it does have a way around it. It's actually a really, really cool. It comes with this envelope and inside the envelope are these things. And these are actually patches. So you can start off learning how to use the synthesizer with these patches. So let me just overlay it over the top like this. And all you do is see where it's got the, the red marks. You just basically put everything to where the red is. This is a bass. It's called Sinister Bass. Let's go a bit deeper. So in a way, there's a way to actually save patches on this synth. So this is how they do it. Now, you might be thinking, well, how do I do one that I make myself? Well, there's two ways to do it. You can get these blank patch sheets like this. But another thing you could do is put this down on, on the synth like this and take a photo. So it does have patch storage. So let's call it old-fashioned patch storage, eh? And by the way, if you're wondering if there's a lot of these, there's stacks. Okay, so don't worry. One thing I will mention here is if you want to get into modular, this might be a good start to learning a bit about modulation. And this has got control voltage. It's got the mod matrix here. And on the back, it's got more CV stuff here. Gate in, gate out. Pitch out. You can put a audio line level input into this and you can control the level there, which pulls all the sound through the filter and the amp. And it also has MIDI in. If you don't like the keyboard on this, you can plug your bigger keyboard into it here. And it has USB. Now the USB gives you access to a few features in here. The last thing too is that over here, because it's an analog synth with voltage control oscillators, sometimes it goes out of tune. So this knob here, you can actually tune your oscillators. Enough about the microbrew. Let's head on back to my next recommendation. The second recommended synth in the monophonic analog category is this one, the Novation Base Station 2. And this synth is an absolute gem. This is probably my one of my favorite synths. It has full size keys and they have aftertouch. But anyway, let's head over to the workbench and let's have a little look at this as well. Here's the Novation Base Station 2 and let's turn it on. Now look at that, it says hello Ramsey. I love this synth. This is another great analog mono synth. So let's talk about what this has. It has two digitally controlled oscillators, DCOs, okay? These aren't voltage controlled oscillators, they're digitally controlled oscillators, which means that technically you don't have to tune these oscillators. It has also a sub oscillator and you can choose between one octave down or two octave down. And also the sub oscillator has three different waveform choices, sine and two variants on square and pulse. A mixing section here, quite a good mixing section so you can turn on the two oscillators. You can also control the sub oscillator separately. And also it has an external ring or a modulator or noise. The next section is the filter. Now this is an analog filter or it's a VCF. Two different types, classic and acid. And it's got two different slopes, 12 dB and 24 dB. So 24 dB and classic is more like probably a Moog filter and the acid is probably more like a TB303 or a Roland SH101 type filter. It's got a really nice big filter cutoff frequency knob here. But also the other thing that I love about this synth is 
filter has its own overdrive. It has two LFOs, two envelopes, a mod envelope and an amp envelope, and you can individually control them or you can combine them. A second overdrive, so this is at the amp level, this is at the filter level, this overdrive here. This one's called distortion, and it also has an oscillator filter modulation. Okay, and also the other thing that I love about it is it has patch memory. But over here, we've also got a sequencer and an arpeggiator, okay? And there's, you notice here, there's a whole bunch of functions built into this synth that you can access from the function and pressing the actual keyboard key the corresponding above. And not only that, but this is full size keys. Do you remember in the microbrit I was showing my finger? So you can see here how much bigger these keys are. So this is actually quite a nice keyboard. I actually like this keyboard. Not only that, but the keyboard has aftertouch. So that particular patch is applying a modulation to aftertouch. But just recently, Novation, who makes this synth, just released a firmware update on this. And this synth's been out for years, and they've just released a firmware update. And the firmware update they released on this is huge. It added two really, really big um, additions to this. One of the additions is it makes this synth duophonic, which means because it's got two oscillators, we can actually play two notes at the same time. I'll just go to one of my favorite patches. This thing just sounds amazing. Great sounding synth this is. You can actually use it as a MIDI controller. It's got MIDI out, so you can use this keyboard to control something else. That is the Novation Base Station 2, probably one of my favorite synths. So the next section under analog synthesizers is the polyphonic analog synthesizers. And I've got two synths in here to recommend. And um, But before we get to those, let's just talk a little bit about what polyphonic analog synthesizers are. So they're basically the same as monophonic, except for the fact that you can play more than one note at a time. So you can play chords. And as long as they have that uh, analog signal path all the way from the start to finish noise generation to amp, that makes them an analog polyphonic synth. So let's check out my two recommendations. The first 
analog poly synth recommendation is this one. It's the Korg Mini Log, and this one is a great four voice polyphonic analog synthesizer with lots of cool features. Let's go to the workbench and check it out right now. Okay, now we've got the polyphonic analog synthesizer section, and this is the first one, which is the Korg Mini Log, and it says here polyphonic analog synthesizer. So we know we're on the right track. But why did I choose this? I think for a beginner and you need to play chords. So let's, where's a nice patch that can do chords? This is a proper voltage controlled oscillator voltage controlled filter it's really a proper analog synthesizer it's got a lot of history in its design but it's very modern and it's got a lot of features on it one of the things i love about this synthesizer is that you can actually visually see the waveform on it so i don't know if the cameras are picking that up too well it's probably worse that way probably better this way So you can see it actually shows you the waveform as you, you know, as you're mucking around with the synthesizer. Now, like the other, like the monophonic ones, we've got oscillators, filters, envelopes, and an LFO. And also, this has a little effects section here. It's got a delay, and it also has a little sequencer, and it also has an arpeggiator too. Okay, here we go. Plus, there's all these different voice modes. Poly, duo, unison, mono, chord. One of the things that I love about this is the way the oscillators work. So for example, as I hold down the key and I adjust this shape knob here, it's changing the shape of the waveform. Now let's have a look at the filter. That's a four pole or two pole. And you can see here, look at all the different harmonics. I really like the filter on this. It's actually really nice. It's a great filter. Anyway, let's have a look at some patches. Okay, what do we got here? So this can be a mono synth. What's the difference between mono mode and unison? Let's have a look. So what unison does is it acts like a mono synth, but it stacks the four voices that this synthesizer has on top of each other. And with the unison mode, you can actually um, you can change with this D tune. Wow, it's a big 
really this is such a good value for money synth and honestly for a beginner and you want to get into analog synthesis and you want to play chords and it plays chords this is all you need do you need more than four voices though if you do maybe have a look at the next one and my second choice of analog polyphonic synthesizer is this one, the DeepMind 12 or the DeepMind 6, just the same, just half as many voices. Uh, but the DeepMind 6 will just squeeze in at our price mark. But I do prefer the DeepMind 12 if you can stretch your budget a bit more. Full size keys. Let's go over to the workbench and check this one out. All right, and this is the second option out of the analog polyphonic synthesizers and this is the Behringer DeepMind 12. Now the one that will fit into the price range is the six voice version, but they're exactly the same. The only difference is the voices across. This thing is massive. Now this is modeled after a Juno, a Roland Juno. So pretty much what you'll see here is the first oscillator and most of the filter and everything is modeled, designed after the sound of a Juno. But they've put this second oscillator in. It's not really a proper second oscillator. It's more kind of, yeah, it's, yeah. Let's not get into it. It's a bugbear with me. Anyway, it's got two LFOs. It's got a voltage control filter. They're DCO, the oscillators are DCOs, digitally controlled oscillators, like the Juno was. It's got a high pass filter and a normal two pole and four pole filter. Three different envelopes, VCA, VCF and mod. So you've got options over way over here. And it's got some keyboard controls over here. And it's pretty decent keyboard on this, actually very well built. But the biggest thing that this has got that a lot of people don't realize is it's got TC Electronics and Clark Technics inbuilt uh, effects. Now these effects are digital. But every part of the analog synthesizer voice is all analog until you add some effects. And at the moment, you can see there's no effects. And that's beautiful analog sound. That's only five voices. I can I can play twelve on this thing. Um, also, you can um, you can have twelve voices unison. You can have a mono synth. There's a whole heap of features. I don't really want to go into all the features of this, but let's add some effects. Let's add a. As you can see, this is a huge, huge, huge synth. It's very, very deep, but it's a great name for it. This actual um, menu thing here, it's huge. There's so many things you can go into. And do you remember how I was showing with the um, the mini log, how you could see you know, graphs and things of how things look? Well, this is great. You can actually see what your LFO is doing, what your envelopes look like. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Okay, one of the great things about this synthesizer is because it has 12 voices you can actually 
unison some of the voice. You don't have to, you no, know, some of the synthesizers you have to unison them all or none. With this one you can unison some of them. So let's go into this menu here. It's called Poly. Click the Edit button. And the polyphony there is on Poly. But let's change this to unison 2. Now that means that the 12 voices now become 6 because I've made it unison 2. It's half of the available voices, but it's stacking two oscillator ones together and two oscillator twos together. So technically, technically I could have four oscillators per voice. Right now, let's listen to this. This thing is eargasm central and there's plenty of patches in here. How do you access the patches? Well, okay, you hold down program and you just turn the knob here and you can see there's so many patches in here. Just so many patches like Patches after patches after patches after patches. You know, go crazy. Learn how to use this synthesizer. Make your own patches. It can sound very, very vintage and it can also sound very modern as well. One thing I forgot to mention too, it does have an inbuilt arpeggiator, which you can't see, it's just off to the, the there. But I've done a video on that, so check my channel if you want to read, learn all about the arpeggiator in this. Um, I've gone really deep into it. Anyway. There's the DeepMind 12 or DeepMind 6. Let's go to the next section. All right, the third and final category that we're gonna have two more synthesizers to recommend in is the digital category. And what is digital? Well, digital is a synthesizer that is made with pretty much just computer chips, integrated circuits, binary computer algorithms, FPGA processors, all that sort of stuff. Basically, they're computer programs which generate sound and they are pretty cool because the benefits of them are that usually that there's lots of voices, there's lots of features, and there's usually built-in effects and lots of bells and whistles. The disadvantages obviously are the fact that they can sound a little bit clinical uh, because they're made by computers and they don't have that organic sound, but the technology is improving every year and they're getting very, very close to what an analog synth can sound like. They've even got synthesizers that mimic analog circuits now. But anyway, let's not get into that because that's not, that's going off on a path we don't want to get onto. Okay, let's have a look at my first synth recommendation for the digital category. And it's this oldie goldie Korg MicroKorg. I've had this synthesizer probably for about 12 years now. It's one of my first, it's probably around about my fifth synthesizer I've ever bought and it's still going strong. So let's go check out on the workbench why I recommend this one. Okay, now we're onto the digital section and this is the Korg Micro Korg. I've had this synthesizer for years. Um, it's actually still in pretty good condition considering how long I've had it for. So why did I recommend this synthesizer? Well, if you're on a budget, this will get you four voice polyphonic 
It's an analog modeling synthesizer, which means that you can get it to sound like an analog synth, but it's actually fully digital inside. It runs on batteries if you want to play it. It's got a vocoder. It comes with a microphone, you can use it as a vocoder. There's the vocoder section there. It's really easy to, to use. There's these program selections kind of set to different genres and the editing features of the synth, it can get quite big with all this stuff here. But these knobs correspond to these rows and it tells you each of the set. It's pretty easy to work out. It really actually isn't that hard. And then you've got these five knobs across the top which correspond to the columns. So it's kind of like a matrix. And I actually think it's quite intuitive. I've done a video on the arpeggiator on this. I think it's quite a deep arpeggiator. I mean, it's pretty big I mean considering <laughs> look it's it's not built to the greatest of strengths it's pretty plasticky but remember how long I've had this for I've had this for years there's nothing wrong with this synthesizer it's it's lasted the other thing too that I think you should remember about this is it can take an audio input, obviously because it's got the vocoder. It's completely MIDI controllable and the arpeggiator sends MIDI notes out. Um, it's got fairly decent MIDI implementation. Um, so if you don't like this micro key keyboard here, you can plug your own keyboard into it. Um, but there's quite a lot of connectivity. It's actually got MIDI through. So it's rare to see since now with MIDI through. There's your audio input. I find the keyboard a little bit small for me because I've got my big fingers, but some of you might find it. It's a really good synth, it really is. So for a beginner, this is a great place to start. Digital, it's never gonna go out of tune. It's rock solid, it's a great synth. And that's about all I wanna say about it. So on to the next one. And the final synth in the digital category that I'm gonna recommend is this one, the Roland JDXI. Now this synthesizer actually bridges across two categories, which is a bonus for you guys. It has an analog mono synth in it, but also it has two 64 voice digital synthesizers plus a digital drum machine and there's a whole bunch more in here this thing is a massive synth packed in a little box and best of all it sneaks in just under 500 us dollars at 4.99 let's go over to the workbench and check it out well here's the last of all of the categories recommendation and here it is in all its glory the roland jdxi this is an absolute powerhouse of a synthesizer packed into a tiny little portable synthesizer case. MIDI in and MIDI out. You've also got line input here. You've actually got a microphone plug that comes with a little boom mic and it's got a vocoder built into this. But what do I love about this thing the most is actually the features. So this is a digital synth, but it also includes a real, this is not fake, this is a real analog synthesizer in here. In fact, I'm gonna show you some photos that they released in the marketing of when they brought this first out to show you that they actually showed the circuit boards 
of both the digital and the analog. If you open this thing up, it'll have two different colored circuit boards and you'll know which one's which. But let's just have a look. I mean, this is an analog synth here. Now you've got built-in effects here too, so you can hear some effects going on this patch. It's got a built-in sequencer, multiple parts. So you've got two digital synthesizers using the Roland Supernatural synthesizer engine. And you can go crazy with this. Now, there are some controls over the synthesizer side here, but there's not as many as you saw on, for example, those analog synths. But there is a lot of menu diving if you want to get deeper. Alternatively, you can actually use some editing software if you want to go crazy and edit this thing. So it can get very, very deep. But at the same time, it's feature packed. It's got lots of different patch banks, keyboards, FX, sequenced, brass, strings, leads, brass, you know. It's got programs. So let's have a look at this program. This one's all pre-programmed from Roland. And you can use the chord play mode. you can see the sequence are working. It's got the two digital parts which we mentioned before, so. This one. Drums. Heaps of drum kits in here. And as I mentioned before, Let's turn the effects off. Off, off, off. All right. There's the analog synth there. It's a proper analog synth. Sub oscillator. Two different, three different types of oscillators. Saw, triangle, square. And you've on the square you've got pulse width. It's really, really cool. Okay, once again, it's got a little mini micro key. Not a great keyboard on this at all. No aftertouch or anything, I don't think. No, no aftertouch. Um, but it's got a pretty decent effect section. And it's got some depth to how you can use this thing. So this is not a video reviewing this. This is just me saying for a beginner, this is a great synthesizer to start out with you'll probably find that there's a lot that you can do just in this and you won't get sick of it very easily. I mean, there's some cheesy building patches here. Uh, what else can we do here? Let's have a look at some leads. And you can also plug the vocoder in here. And there's a whole bunch of vocoder patches up the top. You just twist this thing up to the top and plug your vocoder in. Boom, auto note. Oh, mate, you can go crazy. This is not, like I said, not a review. Anyway. Roland JDXI is definitely worth checking into. It falls into that nice price category. So this is definitely a good beginner synth. 
Righty o. That ends the synthesizer recommendation. Let's head back to me talking about the summary. Well, there you go, guys. There are six synthesizers, two in each category, lots of choice for you, but I think they all speak for themselves. They've all got different sounds, and it's really now up to you about what it is that you might get yourself. Now, just remember, this is all very subjective, but based on my experience with synthesizers, I believe that one of these six should be perfect for you just to start out with and then look once you get to know that and you want to start getting some more come back to my channel because there's plenty of other reviews and tutorials on how to use the gear i really appreciate you watching thanks so much don't forget to subscribe and please leave a comment below and let me know what it is that you're thinking of getting and why and maybe we can help cheers catch you later